New Year arrived with a much too excitement to last. I was wrapped in all the celebrations quite fast. But unknowingly, I delayed many of my tasks. I know it's a novel anam and should have prompted me to be right on the track. I don't regret. I don't apologize. I try not to be sad. Make the best of the moment right now. Let's make things happen and simply start. Let me quickly convey the topic of the day and that is about the alpha 2 agonist drugs especially we're gonna cover a lot about Clony T. Welcome all to this Pharmacology Difficult Podcast. I'm your host Dr. Radhika Vijay, MBBS MD Pharmacology and this is the audio hub to get the best simplified basic tips, strategies, methods and lots of ideas to learn better, understand better and make your concepts crystal clear. If you really find and if there's a question hovering in your minds, is pharmacology difficult? Lend your ears for a while and let in the magic of knowledge. So, alpha-2 agonist drugs. Their main essence lies in the use of these drugs for the treatment of hypertension. Second important use of these drugs is to lower down the intraocular tension by decreasing the aqueous humor production, especially in diseases like glaucoma. The first in these series of drugs, the most importantly I'm going to talk about is clonidine. It's alpha-2 adrenergic receptor agonist and structurally, if we get to observe this drug, it's derived from imidazole. When administered parenterally, this drug causes a very sharp rise in the blood pressure. Why? Because it acts on the post-synaptic alpha-2 receptors, especially which are found on the smooth muscles of the vessels. And to be very quite descriptive, this sharp quick rise in the blood pressure is only of a very short initial duration. It's not a long time response. It's a result of vasoconstriction. It's generally skipped when the same drug is given orally, that is via the oral route. There is a long duration of action and there is very low sympathetic discharge after the short duration of vasoconstriction. And it is observed as a long duration of hypotension. That is a state of low blood pressure that lasts for long after a very transient quick rise in the blood pressure that is due to vasoconstriction and when there's a consistent low sympathetic discharge that results in a long acting hypotension. What is the status of the heart rate? The heart rate is decreased as a result of the parasympathetic discharge. It's very good to know that presynaptic alpha-2 receptors, they are too stimulated. They serve to lower down the release of noradrenaline, especially along with that, the release of adenosine triphosphate, which is abbreviated as capital ADP is also lowered down. And also there is a lowered release of neuropeptide Y. So all these things that is lowering down of the release of noradrenaline along with that less amount of ATP and neuropeptide Y, they result and promote hypotension. It's a very significant observation that noradrenaline levels, they lower down in the plasma and also they lower down in the urine. That is less of noradrenaline is excreted in the urine. So now what's the advantage of knowledge of clonidine being a derivative of imidazoline? Why this fact, why this knowledge is so important? And why did I tell you? A lot of studies in the experimental animals suggest that imidazoline receptors, they are generally three types, I1, I2 and I3. Clonidine acts via the I1 receptors and leads to a reduced sympathetic discharge resulting finally into hypotension. Now this is a proposed mechanism and this is still under the research. It is actually proposed that I1 receptors, they are activated and there is a release of catecholamines that affects the alpha-2 receptors, 
sympathetic discharge it is abandoned finally the result is lower blood pressure now after knowing all these proposed mechanisms and determined mechanisms what are the effects of clonidine what are the results of its action it lowers and hampers the discharge in the preganglionic splanchnic nerve fibers and also in the postganglionic cardiac nerve fibers the heart rate is decreased by activation of parasympathetic discharge leading to an enhanced vagal tone and deduction in the sympathetic discharge or sympathetic flow a few words about the pharmacokinetic or admay profile this suggests that oral bioavailability of clonidine is up to 100% yes its absorption is wonderful if given via the oral route more than half of the given drug it is recovered in the urine and a suggested and suitable route of administration is also transdermal delivery patch which is a good option for steady and continuous drug administration what can be the best use of the drug definitely is the treatment of hypertension there are some other miscellaneous uses of clonidine also like to curb down the diarrhea episodes in the patients and the subjects which are suffering from the autonomic neuropathy clonidine is also one of the drugs which is used in the prophylaxis of migraine clonidine is another very important drug which is used in the withdrawal treatment of alcohol tobacco narcotics etc and how does it help it helps by decreasing the craving it curbs down the hot flushes especially in the women who are in the period of menopause clonidine is one of the drugs that is used in the diagnosis of pheochromocytoma clonidine is also very useful in states of capital ADHD it is also useful to promote the growth spurt in kids it is useful in atrial fibrillation in tourette syndrome in conditions of post herpetic neuralgia psychosis ulcerative colitis and certain states of allergic extrinsic asthma these are some miscellaneous uses which are listed just now let's get to know about the adverse reactions the most important side effects to account for they are sedation and dry mouth but it is also been seen that if there is a long term therapy of clonidine then these side effects of sedation and dry mouth they perish away other side effects that may be seen rarely in some of the people are bradycardia and sexual impairment if the transdermal patches they are opted as a route of drug administration then that may pose some problems of contact dermatitis in specially sensitive individuals but other side effects they are significantly declined and they are significantly improved upon that is they are not seen and if the clonidine is abruptly stopped then there is a problem of rebound hypertension episodes that is immense amount of hypertension and why that happens the basic the most important explanation for this rebound hypertension phenomena due to abrupt withdrawal of clonidine is the super sensitivity of the newly formed alpha 1 receptors so the withdrawal should be very gradual it should not be an abrupt and sudden process some very insignificant side effects they are constipation and nasal stuffing So that's a quick descriptive essay about the clonidine. That is one of the most important drugs in the alpha 2 adrenergic agonists. In the next of the episode I'll be covering the other alpha 2 adrenergic agonists which are some of them are the other congeners of clonidine and some of them are new drugs. So till then I hope you all have a very significant relevant and fruitful start of the new year it doesn't matter if it's delayed for all the updates and latest episodes of my podcast you can visit www.pharmacologydifficult.com 
where you can also sign up for a free monthly e-newsletter of mine. It contains a lot of medical updates, drug updates, and my podcast updates also. You can follow me on different social media handles like Twitter, Insta, Facebook, and LinkedIn. They all are with the same name. Is pharmacology difficult? If you're listening for the first time, do subscribe and follow whatever platform you are consuming this episode. Stay tuned. Do rate and review on iTunes, Apple Podcast. Stay safe. Stay happy. Stay enlightened. Thank you.